Welcome to this demonstration for configuring Oracle Database multi-stream protection jobs with Cohesity's source ID dupe driver in Oracle RMAN. First, uh, let's take a look at the actual uh, system, the actual virtual machine, which I'm going to be using uh, for this particular exercise. Uh, this virtual machine sits in a uh, vSphere infrastructure running on virtual SAN, uh, which is obviously when this point uh, configured and protected with everything you can think of, you know, NSX, microsegmentation, uh, high availability in terms of the storage uh, system that it's running on. But one thing it's missing, which is actual, you know, adequate data protection. And that's what we're going to do right now. So here's the actual uh, VM itself. It's running a couple of uh, databases. At this, actually, this one's just running one. Now we're going to go through the process and procedure of actually uh, configuring the items for this. So we'll start by looking at the view boxes within Cohesity. Obviously, in this case, there is a dedicated view box that currently is not configured to provide any space efficiency features. There are no dedupe, no compression, none of that stuff, because we're actually going to do that on the side, uh, source side, which meaning uh, on the actual server itself. Then we'll go take a look at the procedure for creating a view, which is the storage domain in which uh, the data or this database will be particularly stored. Here we obviously provide um, a name. If one already doesn't exist, you can always create a new one as I'm doing here. Hopefully provide a good description so you can keep track of what's going on in the system as the infrastructure grows. That'll become very useful. Here you obviously identify onto which view box is this view going to be created. Here actually at the bottom, I select the view that has no uh, dedupe uh, enable on it. So obviously we don't have to perform that there if it's gonna be performed uh, on the source. From a QoS policy perspective, that's just basically providing a, um, a priority. You can see now the different protocols that are available in which we can present that particular storage abstraction. Uh, because obviously we're using Linux, we're gonna utilize NFS, but if this was a, a Oracle running on Windows, we could use also SMB, uh, whichever one suits best, right? But we provide multi-access protocols to uh, any one of those particular systems that can consume it. So here obviously create the the view. Uh, one of the things that now once the view is created, uh, you can actually see the share or the mount point that will be available uh, to mount onto the actual servers themselves. So then we later on can actually, you know, clone and bring the data over um, as, after it's been protected on the actual server itself. Uh, we take a look at the views again uh, to identify that all the views have been created. But now we want to look at providing uh, specific access to the particular mount point, right? So we have the ability to provide global whitelist or an individual type of whitelist uniquely added to the particular view. In this particular case, you can simply add either an IP address, uh, a subnet, provide a, a description for the name. I obviously have that already here where my subnet can actually access, uh, can provide access to that particular system and it will be able to do so, but that's the process for actually doing that. Now let's take a look at some other components which are really important for the part where we configure the scripts, uh, modify the RMAN scripts to make things work really nicely. So you can see there are four nodes that I'm pointing out here. One of the things that are extremely important is the fact that we have these virtual IPs, which will tie into individual nodes. As you can see here in the lower, uh, in the bottom where the nodes are located, each one of those nodes has a unique uh, IP address, but those are the ones that are particular to the nodes, right? The way in which we access the resources are gonna be through the virtual IPs to avoid and mitigate any potential outage if there's a potential failure of a node or something of that nature. So now we're ready to create a, a, an actual protection job, which is basically where most of the configuration uh, takes place. So to create a protection job, we typically create or utilize a what we call a remote adapter uh, for Oracle related uh, configurations. Uh, in typical Cohesity fashion, we'll start the process by selecting a policy, which is gonna drive the schedule in which uh, the job is actually going to run consistently and all of those things. As you can see here, I have a policy that was already created. If one didn't exist, you could create one. So this job, this policy is gonna say this job is gonna run every day and it's gonna retain the snapshots for 90 days. Now here's where we look at a bit of a interesting information. Uh, so this is the information that we'll need to input from the actual server itself, from the Oracle server itself, but also some of these things have to be added for uh, efficient communication and secure communication when it comes to uh, performing and executing the actual scripts themselves. So in a case that you're not aware of, you know, how to utilize uh, the, you know, adding the SSH key, public keys and, and to the uh, actual servers themselves, there's a link here, which actually gives you the steps by steps how to do that, because I will demonstrate basically how uh, in an environment where it's already, it's, where it's already been done and just kind of want to walk through the procedure of how to do that. So here we have uh, four windows. Uh, let me just sort of highlight first, this is the, um, 
source ID dupe driver that Cohesity provides for two different types of Linux systems. Uh, to get the source ID dupe driver, you obviously need to uh, contact Cohesity support in order to get it. Uh, what's important here is that I'm looking at the actual directory where it's stored. So the driver can actually be anywhere as long as we call it and put it in the script so that it can be called out correctly. Underneath that window, I have uh, the actual mount points that I've created locally on the system, which are going to be utilized individually for the different channels or the different uh, interfaces that will be utilized to do the to do the uh, to perform the actual uh, protection to run the job itself. On the other side, obviously, we want to make sure that uh, all those same uh, mount points have been mapped to a specific path. Those paths happen to be the virtual IPs of each one of the nodes that I showed you briefly. Uh, on the other uh, on the other screen, which is mapped into an individual node. Now, when it comes to the configuration of secure communication between the Cohesity cluster and the actual Oracle server, uh, here's where we showcase how to uh, add the uh, SSH keys directly to the node. So, obviously, uh, within your your profile, your you know you'll be able to identify a, a a folder which is actually hidden .ssh, which within that folder. Uh, contains an actual file where we can actually uh, copy, you know, paste the key from the actual cluster once it's provided. Here's actually an example on how that's being done. So once that's done, now you've actually assured that you know, obviously um, there's there's adequate communication. Obviously, as long as all the permissions have been set adequately and correctly, uh, we'll be able to proceed. Now, another thing that's very important is the fact that you know we're able to utilize and leverage the RMAN scripts from the location that where they are. We don't have to move them anywhere. In this particular case, I'm looking at the script that I will be using to actually perform uh, this, uh, to run a protection job, particularly with this type of configuration. So I want to go over the script and see some of the modifications that were added. So for anyone that's familiar and, and savvy with RMAN scripts, uh, this is the same stuff. There's a couple of things that we need to add that are pertaining to Cohesity per se. Here specifically is where we list the location, the directory where the actual um, source ID driver resides. Here is the actual number of IPs, of virtual IPs, that are going to be utilized because they're going to be identified for each of the channels that are being used. And also there is a location where the logs will be stored within the same server in the same place. Also here you can see the actual path that are mapped to the share that was created, to the view share that was created, but is mapped to each individual node within the cluster, all pointing to the same sort of share for that level of high availability and resiliency in case of devices failed. Uh, below that, you'll see the actual local mount points that are going to be mapped directly to those different paths. And now below here, as part of the actual RMAN uh, function, uh, or the, some of the things that are going to function within the job, is where you see the actual multiple channels being configured with the actual parameters for the um, source ID dupe driver and its location where it is, where the cohesity views are going to be mount, where those mounts are going to be pointed to according to the paths, in which virtual IP it corresponds to each one of those uh, configurations. At the bottom here, you'll also see uh, the sort of same approach where some of those uh, configurations are also added to finalize the job as it runs. So basically, it's all very simple. Obviously, you'll have to adjust and identify and understand uh, the actual uh, parameters to utilize and how to modify as they reflect and they're needed for cohesity. Now, one thing that's also needed here, I need to actually get from this particular location where the scripts are located because now I'm going to have to input that information into the actual protection job so that Cohesity knows exactly where to perform or execute that particular script from. So now that I actually know the information for the actual node itself, you enter the IP of the host name if you have you know, DNS actually working. Uh, you provide the user which has the adequate permissions and rights to perform the functions here. And then you can actually add the location in the script that is going to be uh, called upon uh, to perform this particular job. Uh, so it's basically that simple at this point in time. Uh, if there are any parameters that need to be added or entered for the particular scripts that you may want, you would enter them in this particular field and just very quickly click Next. Uh, at this point, now that uh, we've gone back to the Cohesity cluster, we've added all the necessary information, we provide a particular name for the protection job. Uh, in this case, this is going to be an HR database that I'm going to protect. Uh, and actually, you'll be able to then not only choose a description, but then at this time, you'll be able to once again choose the view box, which as you see there, it doesn't provide any space efficiency feature, no dedupe and none of that because it's going to happen on the actual server itself. Uh, the actual mount point, the view that is, was created for it, 
And the, the warning is actually make sure that uh, the scripts are mounting or pointing specifically to that view, to that location so that everything works correctly. After that's validated, everything you want is actually configured. Uh, the job is basically done and completed. Now, when I go and look at the actual jobs as they're completed uh, from a configuration standpoint, the protection jobs themselves, uh, here if I go and select just remote adaptive jobs specifically, notice that it says future runs are paused. This is so that if there's something that needs to be done on the server side, you need to probably uh, done some final checkup or before the job starts, before it even kind of runs automatically, the job is actually automatically paused. So now you have to come here and resume the job as I did here. And you'll see that very quickly, the job after being resumed will start immediately to run the protection job, which means executing the RMAN script remotely while leveraging the configuration in place. So I'll refresh the screen here and you'll see that very quickly, uh, the sort of the status of the job sort of changes. Uh, and depending obviously on the size of the, uh, the database you're backing up, the job can actually be done pretty quickly as it, is, as it is in this case here. You can see the job was completed, but we can look at the actual tasks that took place for the different jobs. And very quickly, you can identify how the job was com successfully completed and everything was pretty quickly done. So quite simple, quite easy. Uh, very simple way to kind of uh, eliminate uh, a lot of the uh, risks and challenges and complexity that exist with dealing with really large databases for Oracle and Armin. That's about it. Thank you for watching.